So my name is Bonnie Tamraz, and I am a member of the Syrian Democratic Society of the Bay Area. And Tony has put the extra pressure on me of introducing our congressman <laughs> just a moment today. So bear with me. I took some notes. So, uh, so I wanted to acknowledge our sponsor of today's event. We have the Jewish Democratic Club of Silicon Valley. The president of that is Doreen Castleman, and Doreen is here. <laughs> American, American Democrats, and that is the, the president of that is, uh, is Miriam Azvini. I can't help starting this event by saying, well, three men, one Assyrian, one Persian, and a Jew went into a bar. <laughs> So again, it's with great honor and pleasure I present to you Congresswoman Anna Ishu. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, I was going to go up on the stairs, but you can all hear me, right? I want to be closer here. Uh, let me uh, start out on behalf of all of us. Uh, by thanking uh, Nahri and Tony for opening up their magnificent home to all of us. Let's, uh, let's thank them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Dr. Bonnie, uh, you need to know that Dr. Bonnie is the uh, tallest Assyrian <laughs> in history. <laughs> Doreen, who chairs the Silicon Valley uh, Jewish American, uh, Democratic American Club. Thank you, Doreen, for your beautiful leadership. Yes. And to, and to, um, uh, to Mariam and to Susan for your leadership of the Bay Area Iranian uh, American uh, de uh, Democratic uh, Organization. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I shared this just briefly with some of you that my sister has been trying to get a hold of me without much success. So she called very early this morning. And uh, she said, oh, thank God I got you. Where have you been? I said, well, I've been, you know, I'm working from morning till night. She said, well, tell me what you're doing today. So when I told her that I was coming here and that uh, three clubs had co-sponsored, uh, the Assyrian Democrats, uh, the Jewish Democrats, and the uh, Iranian-American okay. Democrat, she said, there's hope for peace in this world. <laughs> I'm so proud that you would come together. And I'm deeply, deeply grateful that you would do this on my behalf. I, I truly am. I truly am. So here we are in uh, 2022. You know, every cycle, uh, we work hard, we go out and meet with people and say, this is the most important election, the most important election. <laughs> well, I did not think that I would be going out to say, this is, I believe, the most important election of our lives. Yes. The most common thread amongst every single one of us here uh, those that we come from, those that we stand, whose uh, shoulders we stand on, all loved democracy. All loved democracy. And for a first generation American, I always say I won the lottery the day I was born. But I love immigrants. I love immigrants. That's who I come from. 
and they chose this country. They weren't born here. They chose this country. They fled because they were being persecuted. And history keeps repeating itself. So I'm a combination of all of those stories. A combination of all of those stories. And I saw firsthand how much they love this country. I remember when Daddy, when I kept saying, Dad, you need to retire. He was still working in his 80s. He used to say to me, everybody has to have some place to go when they get up in the morning, you know. Mm -hmm. so, but uh, I said, maybe you want to travel and, you know, go back to, uh, uh, even go back to Iran because he was born in as many of the Assyrians were in Urmia. Mm -hmm. He said, what's wrong with this country? You know, you, you see the, the, the depth of the uh, love and, uh, uh, and the attachment. And that is the case for each one of you and your families. The, this is not a unique story. So uh, for those of you that don't know me or know my story, um, in, in, um, I, I should share with you that you know, my mother and father were never interested in running for office or being appointed to anything, but they loved this country. They loved this country. And I saw, and my brother and sister saw, how they participated. They, um, Daddy would always speak at dinner time about the news of the day you know, what the president had done, this is what happened, you know. And he used to, my brother used to say, I'm not interested in that. And daddy would say to him, uh, you better be, because they're making, they're making rules, hi, they're making rules from the time you're born until how you're buried. Someone is making those decisions. So you should know something about it and care about it. So, uh, uh, you know, I'm the sum total, just as you are, on who shaped us. Our faith shaped us, our family shaped us, the experiences of our families shaped us, and, uh, and that's what I've taken into public office. That's what I've taken into office. I served 10 years on the San Mateo County Board of Supervisors. I loved it. Uh, I only needed two other people to agree with me, you know, on a five-member board. But uh, I always went for five, you know. I always wanted to be unanimous. And it really has been the, uh, you know, the honor of, um, uh, of my life uh, to serve in the Congress. I'm the only person um, and woman of Assyrian descent that serves in the Congress. And there was, I believe, only one other, Adam Benjamin from um, Indiana, Indiana. Indiana. Uh, when I got to the Congress, uh, I uh, made it a point to find his colleagues, people that had been there when he served, and glowing, glowing remarks about Adam Benjamin. He was, I believe, a West Point uh, a graduate, and uh, they all respected him. And so when I told them, they said, are you related to him? I said, in a very special way, because we uh, uh, share the same ancestry. So it, it, was, it was wonderful to hear colleagues uh, speak of him. So this is really very, very special. And um, uh, let's fast forward to uh, now and where we are. I think, and I have said this from the beginning of this Congress, well, the beginning of this Congress was January 6th. Could anyone, no one, I should say, no one, even if they'd had a nightmare, would not have envisioned what took place. For American citizens to attack the citadel of our democracy, mm -hmm. I, I, it will never leave me. It will now take that day to my grave. I, I, I have to say, I, I wasn't scared for myself but I understood what this meant for the country. And we see the turmoil around the world. We see the turmoil around the world. When we speak of our own democracy, we see people that are so thirsty for their freedoms. When you see what's taking place in Iran, you see what's taking place there. And every person to a person that's protesting, they're putting their lives on the line. They're putting their very lives on the line. 
And uh, I think, was it Jack, was it you that said, or someone else that these are so many young people, you know? And uh, uh, when you're older, you think of your children. It, 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 we were chatting, yeah. you were saying yeah. that, uh, you know, right away we think of, I better not do this or that because I have my children, my home, my job. Young people have an unobstructed view of the future. And their bravery and their voices are for the very things that we want to protect in the United States of America. So, you know, it's a, uh, it's a circle. It's a circle. And it's so important for the American people and those of us in government uh, to speak out on behalf of them. We have legislation, and I've gone on to it, uh, but I think everybody doesn't know about legislation, you know? But they do know uh, when you stand next to people that, uh, uh, that need the voices of others uh, around the world. It could very well be that these young people, together with other sectors of, uh, of, uh, of the people uh, of Iran, together with the women, and uh, everyone that has joined this, they could very well bring down, they could very well bring down the government, please, dear God, you know. No, really for, uh, you know, this is, um, it's not for, um, well, I'll put it in our terms. It's not, at the end of the day, about a particular party, as important as political parties are, because that's how we organize around our, our values. Uh, but what democracy represents. What democracy represents. I don't think there's a human being that comes into this world in their earliest consciousness, they want to be independent, right? They're unique. And one of the beauties, I think, of the Democratic Party is, is that we embrace everyone. We're criticized for it, <laughs> right? <laughs> We're criticized and, uh, and sometimes even held suspect sometimes even held suspect. And uh, for those of us that are a little darker, they hold that against us because of the biases and, uh, and prejudices that have been passed down one generation after another. But this is, um, this is an enlightened group uh, coming from a heritage of thousands of years. And um, again, those whose shoulders we stand on. In the Jewish community, the Jewish community knows persecution wherever they've been. And they do to this very day. And we've seen in these dark times, the, uh, the anti-Semitism has been on a terrible rise in the United States. And right here in our own communities. Mm -hmm. The old saws about, you know, about Jews. It, um, you know, what we know is that it's wrong that it's wrong. I view, you know, I hold the view of my parents, which really they gave me my faith, that um, we're all God's children. We're all God's children, mm -hmm. every single one of us. Yes. And I, when God looks at us, he doesn't see any of these differences, you know? And um, I've said to uh, some of my Republican friends, um, let me share something with you. Wait, you have a God friend. never made any junk. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. God never made any junk. And so, you know, our, um, uh, you know, these are the, the, the beautiful things that I was taught. And it is really the highest privilege of my life to take these values into the Congress of the United States of America. And and it's because of people here that have stood with me. I, I can have the best ideas and uh, you know all the energy in the world if you don't have good people with you and and uh, that they have my back, uh, no matter how tough the times are. Um, uh, I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't have been able to be elected, much less re-elected. So I, I want you to know how deeply grateful I am how proud I am for the Assyrians. Uh, oh, I can't even say it. Uh, 
You know, we're going to learn a gel to gel be tied al Bali. In a chill and So that's not so bad, right? That's not so bad. That's not so bad. And uh, Tony did a little research by by going out into the Assyrian American community to probe because um, Assyrians, like so many other um, uh, nationalities. Um, they identify themselves from what village they come from. Mm -hmm. And so the village that his family is from, on my mother's side, they are from that village as well. So, uh, and I said to him when I was a little girl, there were two things that uh, stood out to me about Ed Deshai. Oh. That they were uh, as affectionate as Assyrians are, uh, that they were the most loving of all, I thought, the most affectionate, and uh, that they were really good timers. They knew how to party. They knew how to party. They knew how to party really well. So, uh, bravo to the Ertesha. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone else is scratching their head. No, they, from they don't know what I'm talking about. They don't know what, uh, exactly what I'm talking about. So, uh, you know, to the clubs, thank you. Thank you for coming together. You know, it really is a beautiful statement about each one of you, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, you really are setting uh, a magnificent example. First of all, it's an eloquent statement about each one of you, uh, but that you decided to come together uh, is a first, and, uh, but you know what will happen? It'll become a tradition. It will become a tradition, mm -hmm. and you know what? We'll all be better for it. So. Uh, to each one of you, thank you. Uh, you're the wind beneath my sails. Look how sweet she's reaching out. She doesn't know what I'm talking about, right? I'm gonna put her to sleep pretty soon. Uh, rock her to sleep. So um, uh, I'm, I'm deeply, deeply grateful to you. Um, and that I always feel like each one of you is a safe place for me. I feel that each one of you is a safe place for me. There's something that is uh, very deep and broad in terms of the connection. And uh, I think that uh, my beautiful mother and father are watching from heaven and smiling. They yeah. like this. So, to each one of you, thank you. Um, do you have questions that you'd like to ask? They learned that I'm coming here to meet you. Uh, they sent me some questions to ask, which I really want to share. You answered them from the day. You know, that's beautiful. While you were talking, you actually gave me the answers. However, one other reason that I'm here today is I'm here um, to see the first ever Assyrian Congresswoman, and I'm truly honored to meet you in person. However, the question that I was asked and which you answered was, um, there has been a, a rumor around that you don't like to consider yourself a Syrian, which you, with all the things that you said about Erdeshai, which my mom was from Erdeshai, as Tony was from Erdeshai. So that I got my answer. I hope our viewers got theirs as well. So, but I, do you want to say anything in this uh, particular or not? Well, I, I think you use an interesting word, rumor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Misinformation. Uh, I, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I wouldn't um, be the person that I am if I hadn't been shaped by those that shaped me. That's who I am. So uh, uh, whether it's here in the Congress uh, or when I've traveled internationally, uh, when I was in Iraq and meeting with their prime minister and uh, really looking after our people because they have had, uh, uh, well, what we did by invading Iraq, uh, it's uh, the Assyrians that have paid uh, one of the highest prices, uh, because we had a population of between 1.2, 1.4 uh, million Assyrians. It's now, uh, at best, about 200,000. So, uh, you know, I, I don't think everyone 
Uh, and I don't expect people to tune in and try to figure out what Anna is doing every day. People are stuck in traffic, they're taking care of their families, they're working hard. Uh, in so many cases, they're taking care of elderly parents, uh, so many people trying to make ends meet. So they don't know everything that I'm doing in Washington. But um, I have to, um, uh, I have a conscience. I have a conscience, and, uh, and, it, and it's with pride that I uh, uh, speak out uh, in the Congress on behalf of both the Assyrian community, uh, whether it's domestically or internationally, or the Armenian American uh, community, um, and, uh, and I traveled there very recently uh, in meeting with uh, uh, the government. But it's important for everyone to understand something, um, and that is, I represent, I'm a representative of all of the people of the district, um, and that uh, I'm uh, an American congresswoman. Yes. So it's the... Uh, it's the uh, so, so much for rumors. Yeah. <laughs> so, I heard your answer, and that was beautifully said. Um, yesterday, I got that through mail. I didn't get it from here, Tony. <laughs> I got that through mail. And it's a beautiful, actually, flyer. I'm a graphic designer, and I seriously enjoyed it. I was reading over here is for you, Congresswoman Anna Issue. A leader speaks her mind. Mm -hmm. A leader never quits. And a leader gets things done. So with all that said, uh, I know you're representing all American in 16 districts here. Uh, however, I'm just thinking as uh, an Assyrian, Armenian um, descendant, Congresswoman, what do you have in mind? What do you have in mind for Assyrian people to follow through with this uh, statement? Like any plan, any dream, anything that you want to do during your... Well, I think that there service. are... Uh, I think there are some real basics in life that, it, regardless of how someone is registered to vote, I've always thought the American people are not asking for too much. People would like to be able to buy their own home. They'd like to raise their family. They want to educate their children so that they have a better life than they had. Uh, they want to have a good job that has benefits, that helps to take care of their family, good health benefits, the opportunity to save and be rewarded for it, and they want to retire uh, and not be dependent on their children. And that may sound very simple, but that's really wherever I've been in the world. I've been in some of the smallest villages. That's what people want. So I've, I've never thought the American people are asking for too much. Now, are there complications with each one of those? We know we live in one of the most magnificent areas in the entire nation, and it's very expensive here. So how are our children? My children can't live in the community that they grew up in, and that makes me really sad. Even if I can help them a little bit, it's not enough. You know, does everyone have a job with the benefits uh, that really working people should have? Uh, uh, some of our schools, in terms of public education, are not all that they should be. That's unfair because it's, it's in many ways uh, uh, clipping the wings, like of a little bird, before they get to fly. Their wings are clipped because their school is not as good a school as, as it should be. And, uh, and then retirements in our country. Some people have good systems, others don't. Um, uh, but we do have Social Security, and we always have to fight to protect it. Now the Republicans, you hear them? Yeah. You hear what they're saying? You hear what they're saying about Social Security and Medicare are entitlements. Yes. People are entitled to them. They are two of the most successful and popular programs that the federal government has put into place. And without them, where would people be? I know mom and dad, boy, they loved those cards in their wallet. I still, I kept them. I kept their cards, their Social Security cards and their Medicare card. 
Daddy always used to say, make sure you don't take those cards out of my wallet. You know, it was a, it was sacred, sacred. And now they want to take those programs, take away the entitlement, put it in the budget process so that politicians can, can debate that every year and see if they want to put money in it or not. That is their vision for people in our country. We don't believe in that. We don't believe in that. You know, the word community is a very beautiful word. And, um, and it reminds me of communion. But it's a coming together and unifying. And to me, that is one of the penultimate ways to divide people in our country. And you know, it's easy to divide. It is simple to divide. You can say things and say, you know, Jack lost his job. You know what, Jack? The reason you lost your job is because some Mexican took it. And then, boy, there's division. I, I don't have to go through all the examples. We know. We know all of that is too alive and too well in our country. It's another thing to bring people together. And, you know, this uh, uh, really safety and health net uh, uh, really keeps people whole. Mm -hmm. They're not rich systems, but you know what it does? It recognizes that each person is a full human being, that we value them, that we value each other, you see? So that's why I love being a Democrat. And um, mm -hmm. so I hope that they have a good I think, uh, Carolyn, you have, I wanna, I wanna point out, uh, Carolyn, Carolyn came into our campaign when I first ran for Congress in 1988. Yeah. That's wow. how long she's been supporting. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? And I'm so proud of her. She's Thank brilliant. You. She's a great I'm attorney. I'm proud of you. And actually, that's what I was going to say, that I'm a testament since 1988, maybe sooner, when I was a student still that you were always proud of your heritage. Yes. And whether it was Assyrian, Armenian, Iranian, you mentioned it in every single statement that you gave throughout the years. However, I'm also proud that you are a representative of people. Mm -hmm. Not just one group, but of all. delighted with you. It goes beyond saying with uh, everybody that is here for that reason. We support you. We love you. We love what you've done. Um, I'm wondering if you have a program to mentor other young, ambitious, possibly politicians from these communities that you would like to mentor. Yes, I, well, thank you. Um, and uh, this was not arranged ahead of time, but <laughs> I'm, really, I'm really happy that you asked the question. Uh, when I first ran for Congress, and I brought in high school students to the headquarters, and I think that they were, you know, they didn't really under, I think maybe they thought I was gonna ask them to work in the campaign. The first thing I said was, that's not why I wanna talk to you. I want to talk to you because I want to hear where you think we need to go. What f what's the future that, if you were going to paint a picture with words, what do you want that future to look like? And, um, you know, you always learn when you listen, especially to young people. So I made a pledge to them then that if the people of the district elected me, that, uh, that they would have a voice in, in the representation of the district. So shortly, maybe about three weeks after I was sworn in, and we got it, uh, uh, um, you know, we did all the preparation for it, I launched a student uh, advisory board for the congressional district and reached out to every single high school um, in the district, and uh, public, private, it didn't matter, and invited students uh, uh, to come in. I don't uh, reject anyone. It's not by application and then I decide who I want and who I'm not. It it's, doesn't work that way. And uh, so now, after all these years, 
I don't know, 15, 1,800 young people have served on that board. Uh, many of them have gone into some kind of, uh, some form of, uh, on the public side, not necessarily running for office, but there are those that have run for office as well. Uh, but they've gone into public administration, uh, some of them into political science, others have followed whatever star they wanted to follow. But I want young people to understand how all of this works, how it works. Interning in my office in DC and here, and um, they say, well, you know, we're just doing small things. I said, you know, everything that we do is important. Everything is, because we're dealing with people's lives and the casework that we do. We do so much immigration work, too, out of the office. So I'm very proud of that to this day, uh, and because the, uh, the, the uh, congressional district has, been, has parts of three counties, uh, I didn't expect students to be driving up to Santa Clara County from Santa Cruz or from other parts of San Mateo County to Santa Clara County. So we split the board up. That first board said to me, you need to tell us what you want us to do. I said, it's exactly the opposite. You need to tell me what you want me to do. So they make, uh, uh, they've made over the years, every group, they've made uh, recommendations to me. Many of them I've put into the form of legislation and uh, their report, which they put on publicly, so that their teachers, their parents, people in the community can attend that, uh, that presentation at the end of the year, uh, that um, uh, uh, goes to the Library of Congress uh, so that others can uh, learn from uh, the students here. So I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of that. It's, uh, I think uh, they tell me that it's been transformational for them. And uh, if that's what they say, then I will accept that. That's terrific. <laughs> And I, th there's something else too, and there, is, you know, there are always those that are, um, uh, you know, are attracted uh, to run for office, and I think it's, um, I think it's a real responsibility of mine to bring along young people, to bring along young pe people, um, to um, uh, to coach them, uh, to encourage them, and. Uh, and my emphasis has always been women and minorities because it's harder. It's harder. It really is harder for us. I don't hold anything against the men. I don't want you to <laughs> I support plenty of good men. Um, but I think that, uh, I remember, I'll just share this with you. When I was running uh, and I was at a Kiwanis or Rotary Club meeting, and uh, you know, I gave my speech and that, and then it was time for questions. There was a man in the back of the room who raised his hand right away to call down him, and he said, do you think that you're better because you're a woman? Mm. It was a very good question. <laughs> my sweetheart, I'm so happy that you're here. I'm so here for you. <laughs> my brother. And um, I said, um, no, I don't think I'm better because I'm a woman. But I have a different experience than you do. Yes, yes. I have a different experience. And I believe all those experiences belong at the public table. Belong at the public table. So it's a, it's a, I want to just circle back on something, because it stays with me. For those that um, have heard these rumors, and I don't, where's the young woman that was asking the question? Is she late? Yeah. No. yeah, he's still here. Um, you know, it was Anna Eshoo that had to member to member on both sides of the aisle to even explain what Assyrian means because they didn't know. Uh, yeah. All right? genocide resolution that I brought to the floor of the house. That I brought to, no one else brought that genocide resolution to the floor, uh, and I'm proud to say that I was the one that did it. The, uh, Assyrian, the, uh, the Assyrian genocide is in that. So uh, whomever um, is into rumors, uh, put that under your hat. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Bessa in, in La. Okay. Yeah, yes. <laughs> no, it's, I'm happy. Yes. <laughs> we can go as long as we can. <laughs> My name is Kurosh. Yes. I, I'm just an Iranian. Don't say <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, I wanted to ask you about a topic that you mentioned, and I, I think that nowadays is in the heart of all of us who have direct or indirect relationship with Iran, and not even that, just being human and watching people of Iran struggling, and now they are begging for the freedom that they, they think yeah. they deserve. What is Congress doing? to help the people, you know, beyond just uh, statements. Mm -hmm. In practice, what is happening? Yeah. Well, it's an excellent question. First of all, Congress is a legislative body. Mm -hmm. It's a legislative body. So we're lawmakers. That's what we do. And um, I think that, um, uh, that there are two parts of that. One, that you speak to what the issue is, whatever it is, <laughs> but that the, uh, the real work is in the legislation. And so uh, without remembering the name of the, uh, the, uh, the number, you know, there are about between 20 and 25,000 bills introduced in each two-year session. So I don't, I don't even know the number of my own uh, uh, bills. I know the titles. I know what they are. So uh, I think it's important to note what's in the legislation. It not only condemns the Iranian government, uh, for what it is doing, and it spells all of that out, uh, but it also calls uh, for sanctions. It also calls uh, for uh, sanctions in, uh, in key areas of the, uh, of the Iranian government. And, um, uh, and I think that that's very important. I, I think especially for the Iranian com uh, American community, though, that it's important for them to hear many Americans um, speak out and uh, identify with what's taking place. That it's really, I had, uh, I had a call from uh, uh, a, a member of uh, a Iranian family, it's a very large community in, uh, in Washington, D.C. And uh, many of them have befriended me. They call me Anajan, you know? So, <laughs> I'm Anajan, 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 what are you doing? Come to our house for dinner. I said, I can't, I'm working, you know? I can't. But uh, um, they, um, they are bereft at what's taking place. And he shared, there was very little knowledge of what Congress was doing, very little knowledge. I hope that uh, to give this a, a, a larger spotlight, that in the uh, lame duck session, which is after the elections, we go back into session uh, November 15th, I think, uh, between uh, November 15th and uh, the middle of December that we take it up because then the press is going to cover it. The press will cover it. Right now they're not. I don't even see it in the... Uh, uh, there's coverage of what's taking place in Iran, but there's not coverage of what we're doing in Congress about it. Is but there's very good support. You, you should know that. Is and it possible that we introduce a legislation to block any dealings with the Iranian government block any negotiations, block passing or letting any money that is now in foreign countries mm -hmm. to go to Iran, because that money will be used to uh, yeah, kill well, there people. There's an Iranian family that said to me, Mr. Biden, uh, the, uh, we're so upset, we're outraged because Mr. Biden put $9 billion on a plane and sent it to Iran. I said, yeah. where the hell did you get that from? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, really. No, no but we chill in Nippu. You know, we chill in Nippu. You know, I mean, they really, they really uh, uh, yeah. believe that. And, uh, uh, you know, it's, um, uh, uh, but uh, you know what? I'm kind of used to dealing with these things, not just with what my friend said, but, um, you know, misinformation, disinformation. Uh, I think you're referring to the uh, negotiations that are taking place between the uh, administration and Iran. I doubt that there will be any coming together given what's taken place right now. Uh, and, and those uh, negotiations really have not, um, have really haven't um, uh, uh, succeeded in any way, shape, or form. Um, Mr. Trump put a lot of poison in the water. 
Yeah. You put a lot of poison in the water, so uh, I don't see <laughs> right now. I don't. I don't see those negotiations going anywhere, well, and especially and especially. Mm -hmm. That was a strong statement. Mm -hmm. Ten thousand revolutionary guards. They are going after all of their families who are transferring money to Canada. Mm -hmm. This is the practical way mm -hmm. to show Iranian government you can't do this. Well, but just when it comes from the, the language of the legislation for the sanctions, it speaks to the various groups that would be. Um, uh, and there's a description of them because there's more than one. It's not mm -hmm. just the uh, revolutionary guards. There's, uh, you, you know, who the mm -hmm. other state, many stakeholders are, uh, that they would be sanctioned. So I think we need to pour over the words to see if they're adequate. I think it's very well drawn. I think it's very well drawn. You need to give me your email address so I can tell you. I want you to read it and then you tell me what you think. Sure. Okay? Appreciate so you can advise me. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Um, Kind of speaking to what you were talking about earlier, if the Democrats can manage to maintain control of Congress, are there any plans to reintroduce the Fairness Doctrine? The Fairness Doctrine has to do with our uh, telecommunication systems. And that was put into place, uh, it should be called the Unfairness Doctrine. <laughs> yeah, that was put into place during the Reagan administration. There aren't the votes for it. There are not the votes for it. If you have the vote, you know what? You can have the best idea that any human being ever had on the face of this earth. The first question that either the speaker or any leader is going to say, how many votes do you have? How many votes? Say, uh, you have 10 votes, you have 100 votes. Uh, in the House, you have to have at least 218. See? So there have not been, uh, I announced years ago, uh, a, a legislation on that. Oh my God, the right wing came after me. Whoa, they've just sawed my head off every day. Yeah, I, it's, it's, I, I don't know. I, I don't really clearly get it, but uh, it's, well, I mean, I understand the issue, but uh, they feel very strongly about it. But there aren't the votes. Yeah, there aren't the votes. Yes. You're smiling. You're smiling. You've got a big smile on your face. Follow up on what he was talking about. Uh, almost over 40 years ago, uh, some of us believe that British government imposed Ayatollah Khomeini mm -hmm. to Iranian people. Mm -hmm. And American government went along because British is the top ally of United States. Mm -hmm. I think time has come for the United States to tell British government, stay away from Iran, we are coming back. Well, I think, uh, if I might just make an aside, I think the British government is looking for a new prime minister. <laughs> <laughs> uh, may I she, only, she only lasted, I think, 44 days, 44 or 45. But I hear this from the Iranian-American community. There's a deep, deep resentment of the British, mm. very deep. And this is, uh, it's decades long. I'm more than aware of it. I have many discussions with my friends in DC, especially uh, about the British. Um, and um, I, I, don't, um, I don't think it's as simple as just uh, dialing up the Brits and saying lay off, you know? I think, it's, uh, I think it, it comes in a different way. Uh, the the world is just, yes, bad. sure. <laughs> Brits are great allies. But you know, great nations make big mistakes. Great nations. I think, um, if I might add this, I think one of the marks of greatness of, uh, of America is that we're big enough to acknowledge our mistakes. And we, uh, we turn the, the pages back into history and study them. There are documentaries. I mean, Ken Burns just did an, an extraordinary documentary uh, on Jews and what America did and didn't do when they were desperate to get out of uh, Germany and Europe. And, and we failed them in many ways. But we're big enough to acknowledge it, you know? And uh, I, think, uh, I think that, uh, that uh, uh, the UK does as well. 
They're very close allies. You know where we're really close? With our intelligence. Yeah. With our intelligence. Uh, we have the best intelligence in the world, intelligence capacities. Britain is, uh, is next. And so they are, they're very, very close on that. And I lived that for 10 years. I served on the House Intelligence Committee, so and I know it very you, well. When you listen to BBC 4C today, yeah. you feel like they are uh, still supporting them. Really? I mean, yes, they it? are. Yeah. yeah. Yes, they are. Even now, what's happening, they are supporting it. And these are the people in the streets that they don't know what the Shah's name was, what the Shah's families were from. These are all uh, born after the revolution. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we didn't do such a sterling job in the United States before you go to the UK. You know, I mean, here, Jimmy Carter was there toasting the yeah. Shah and uh, uh, wishing him a happy new year yeah, and then yeah. didn't even allow him didn't even allow him to come into the country for cancer treatments. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I I don't think that was a proud moment for our country. So they always have Yes, yes. Just a minute. Uh, yes. So may I interrupt? Uh, so let's because we gotta go with this uh, uh, would you like to, because look at a lot of questions, would you like yeah. to extend after four? So do you answer the questions? Well, I want, we have to answer, a... I want to answer the questions, Tony. I don't want people to leave and not have their questions. Oh, no, no, but maybe we will do it. Okay. But uh, we oh, just okay. want to, Tamar also made the recommendation. We have a surprise uh, award for on the issue. Let's uh, oh, do yes. that. Oh, then we will continue oh, with the, oh, huh? Oh, then we will continue with the questions because uh, a lot of people I see that they have questions. As long as uh, she's willing to answer them and she does, then we'll continue. So uh, this award is from uh, three clubs, three Isn't democratic right? clubs, yeah. uh, the Assyrian yeah. club, uh, Iranian club, and the Jewish club. Uh, mm -hmm. And we want to have all the president of the clubs come here. Mariam is here, Dr. Mariam. Did Doreen, Doreen is here. Where is she? I'm here. You're right there. Okay. Okay. I'm looking for you. And um, mm -hmm. it is very personal for me as a, you know, uh, not that I'm also active in the Democratic uh, Party in uh, Santa Clara because I wanted to, from our community, extend our appreciation for 40 years of service to our community and to larger Bay Area and to our whole United States nations. And we want to thank you. And if uh, the presidents of the other clubs have something to say, go ahead. Sure. Uh, uh, I've known Anna for a long time. And I was just reminding her that she endorsed my daughter to go to West Point almost 30 years ago. <laughs> so, and I didn't know her at that time. So Anna has been always uh, supporting us. I, I even had a very controversial question for her and at, at one meeting and I presented that and I said, how come you have not supported this resolution? And right away she said, I did, but let me uh, go back and get back to you on what, what happened to the resolution and why it didn't go through or not many people signed it and so on. So I got many, many, I've, I've kept them by the way, uh, <laughs> because it has your name and yeah. envelope on top. Uh, and so I was really happy that she followed through. I mean, if you think about it, I'm one constituent of how many <laughs> in your district, right? So that aspect of her conduct and really supporting us, we've gone to her office many times uh, because we had an issue that was going on for our community and she has supported us from that perspective. So we, when we give this award saying, thank you for your support, I'm just trying to give most of you who don't know me or what was going on, that there are facts behind that. It's not like we are trying to be nice and let's give you an award. So thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, we are so honored to be here today, to be able to have this kind of work together for all of our clubs, and, and for all of our clubs that share history, as Anna has said, to hate and anti-Semitism, to the types of things that have, have made it so hard for us to come from other countries and come here, and, and to be able to be here, be Democrats and be in America, 
We are so proud oh. to be able to be here to give you this award. Thank you, Doreen. Uh, so a little beautiful. bit more, oh, but I'm, I'm not done, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so there's, there's two anecdotes that I wanted to be able to give on the part of our Jewish Democratic Club. One is, and, and is Tamara still here? So Tamara, as is also in our club, is just, as Anna is, um, is has been our, our point person for a lot of things we do. And we did our endorsements for the first time this year. We had endorsements, and which was a wonderful thing to do. And one of our first endorsees, of course, was Anna. And not only was that because of Anna's incredible um, amazing support, not only of us, but of all Democrats. But um, we also are co-sponsored by, um, with the, our affiliate is DFI, uh, Democrats for Israel. And, and so what happened was that um, they have a rating system. That rating system says uh, support, strong support, or very strong support. And someone is, this was the first time for Anna to be able to be endorsed, so she got strong support, which is incredible on the first time around. Well, not according to her good friend Tamara, who said, why did, why did she not get the strongest support? <laughs> I didn't so, know that. Oh, you didn't know this? So, so, um, so Tamara, so I said, okay, I'll be in touch. So I, I wrote a justification. So I started looking at Anna's um, legislation, which I had known before, and what she's done for the Jewish community. It was so strong and so full. And I mean, you know, three, you know, uh, you know like three uh, incredible congressional, it, it was just all over the place. So I sent it out, it was very long, and immediately I got a response back, very strong support, the strongest Isn't support that possible. Thank you. you are that strong support for us. We are so thankful to have you as our congresswoman and we're so thankful and honored to be part of this coalition that we're working with together. It really is. Thank you, Doreen. Isn't that something? Dashnit Kubal, they put on our language. Farsi is really choice a third I don't know if you can read the Hebrew one. It's there. It's there. But that's a unique thing, you know, kind of, hopefully we'll go more on doing this kind of projects with between Isn't different communities. Beautiful. Okay, oh we have rough time, you want to give Thank you. Isn't that beautiful? Tony. Who's going to take a picture? Because this is really great. Yeah, in front of you. Let me, I want to say something about Tony. You know, um, it's so beautiful that we're here. Uh, uh, you make it look like all of this is just so easy to do. And we're talking about the club. Do you know, Tony took this responsibility on his own shoulders. And he had called my office. He wanted to speak to me. Uh, I said, I know, I know who he is. Give me his number. I'll call him. Uh, we call, called him at night. We had a wonderful conversation. and. Uh, when we had that conversation, he had, um, he was very intentional. He knew what he wanted to do. He thought it was very important to bring Assyrians together and to form a club. And I said, Tony, do it. And whatever help you need, I'll be right there for you. And you know, it's not an easy thing to do. Uh, as in every community, we all know this, we know it in the Jewish community, we know it in the, the Italian-American community, we know it in the Iranian-American community, you can go each community at, uh, uh, at a time. They love to argue with each other. <laughs> they love to argue with each other. So, uh, uh, Tony recognizing that, and I said, now Tony, don't get discouraged by anything, because uh, from a hundred people, you'll get a thousand different views, you know? But uh, this is about our democracy. This is about our country. You know, if our communities aren't strong, then our democracy can't be strong. So what I view each one of, um, uh, of our beautiful friends here, 
um, they're, um, they are um, builders of democracy. They understand what the building blocks are. They start right on the ground here at home. It's lovely to talk about Washington, D.C. It's all this big stuff and maybe fancy people and I don't know what not. Right here on the ground at home. And um, so that's why this, this means so much to me because I know that they poured their hearts and souls into it. And um, I will treasure this all the days of my life. Thank, Thank you, you to each one of you. Susan yes, is hiding back there, Susan. but she really is the backbone of this whole coalition. No, I'm serious. She's always laughing. She, uh, she actually quit her presidency at the South County Club, which was huge. There were like 150 people, members, and she has built it up just to start doing this coalition building because, like you said, most of us don't talk to each other or, or we are having our own, you know, yeah, dividing yeah. lines. Mm -hmm. But we have found out how wonderful it is to collaborate. It is. It is. And me attend each other's meetings. That's how it started. Uh, Susan again helped um, Tony and... She's been a very good mentor for... Isn't it? Yes. So, Isn't so, it? But it's yeah. good though. We love it. We want to continue. Well, I thanked her. If you guys need right any help, call us. <laughs> Question. Yes. Can I have a question? Sure. I have a question, and it's probably, I don't know. Speaking of the intel that we have here, and speaking of the DOJ, uh, I just wanted to know do you think that Trump will go to jail at some point? Because <laughs> I just want your opinion, and just would like to know are we, I think, or will I think he wiggle his way out? I think the likelihood of his. Um, being indicted and tried, that likelihood is much higher today than it was um, in the recent past. Yeah, under two scenarios: the one of um, uh, relative to the, um, you know, that the DOJ, Department of Justice, the the uh, 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 the uh, Attorney General is the one that would have to make that decision. But I think that the um, what. Um, has been uncovered by the January 6th committee um, is is really damning, is really damning. And the other is the case out of New York. And um, so we'll see. I, I can tell you that wherever I go in the district, uh, people really want, and the constituents writing to me, calling me and all of that, that um, the American people, um, they, they really want accountability. You know, I mean, if any one of us goes through a stop sign or, or speeds through a red light, we know what's going to happen to us, right? You know, I mean, these are like the simplest things of every day. What this man has done and so far, you know, uh, has not paid the price for, has not, uh, the justice hasn't been done. Uh, I know that there are many journalists that write that, uh, that it would be damaging for the country to indict and try a former president. I think it's the exact opposite. I think that we don't survive. Could we just really quickly sure. um, honor Gail Pellerin, who had to go. Yes. But she came here, for anyone who doesn't know, with redistricting, mm -hmm. Gail Pellerin is up against a Republican. Mm -hmm. For the assembly district, is it 28? 28. 28. Yeah. It's on your ballot. You'll see yes. your name. Yeah. And, and uh, if her the, name's not there, then she's not in your district. And Anna has endorsed her. Yes. This lady. Yeah. She's a lesbian. Tons of questions for the long time. Actually, the three of us back there. I saw three more ballots. Yes. Okay. We were trying to get her to So the, the question is. Um, the, the local elected, the local uh, county boards, uh, local uh, Democratic parties from San Francisco all the way down to Monterey, they have started passing these resolutions in support of Iranian women led uprising in Iran. No more, no less. It's very simple. And what is the issue is, and thank you for being the only congressperson from our area, except for Barbara Lee, to acknowledge what is happening in Iran. 
can you be the lead on behalf of us to at least issue a statement on behalf of the California Congressional Democratic members that at least you condemn what is happening mm -hmm. in Iran. Yes. As I said, no more, yeah. no less. No, I mean, Santa Clara yeah. County, mm -hmm. Cindy Chavez, they passed this beautiful resolution, mm -hmm. just for the ones that they don't know, um, is in support of, of whatever is going on and the women-led uprising in Iran. But they added a very simple uh, sentence. They offer to be a sanctuary for all the refugees or asylum that if it end up possibly happens, at least Santa Clara County would be a sanctuary. You know what? Uh, you know what's important for each one of you to know, uh, whatever community you belong to, which is so beautiful, this is all a two-way street, all right? I need to hear from you. If you call me and say, Anna, the clubs are doing this and they only had that and we need you to help us with the whatever, uh, I, I don't look to see what everybody, I don't know what everybody is doing and thinking every single day, 24 hours a day. It's impossible, I have 700,000 constituents. So I look to you to tell me, and I, I sincerely mean that. Sure. I always say to people, uh, if you learn something about your issue or whatever, uh, don't assume that I know. Let me know. This is not a hard thing for me to do, and absolutely will uh, roll our so, Yeah, yeah. If you let me, if, I want to recognize Rachel, which is president of the Australian Association. Uh, how are you? And she has questions. Sure. Uh, sure. Thank you very much, Shay. First of all, I would like to thank the Syrian Democratic Party as well as the other uh, parties today that made this beautiful it is. Uh, yeah. appreciation. It's very long overdue, and as a community of Syrian also, we should have done something like that. So thank you again, Tony, for uh, raising our head, <laughs> making us hold our head. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And I also want to give a testimony to all uh, Congresswoman issues, uh, support to the Syrian community. There have been a lot of issues, as she is very well aware, that there are controversial thoughts about her should have done this, should have done that, supporting the genocide, remembering a Syrian genocide, why she remembers the Armenian genocide, if you recall. We, even came to your office and had a conversation about that. Uh, there's always that mixed emotion about, um, among the community that what should Anna do for us and she hasn't done, but we don't realize that what we should do, just like you mentioned, what we should be coming and asking you and what solutions we should be asking you to, to take on so that these causes are more made well of aware of and there is the right resolutions mm -hmm. come um, to the count to the uh, Congress and uh, just recently I believe it was the um, uh, Assyrian Policy Inst Institute that uh, uh, spearheaded the resolution that's coming on now and uh, with the help of the Assyrian caucus my question is we know I know and whenever whenever <laughs> I speak I know I mentioned to them that Congresswoman Ashu had done a lot of bringing awareness for the Assyrian causes and helping the Assyrian causes and the Assyrian genocide when, where she can. But we have to be the voice that asks her what to do. So I'm asking you, there is a coalition now formed as a democratic party. There are local Assyrian communities. There are uh, national Assyrian communities. There are individuals passionate about these issues that each are trying to do something, but our efforts have not been measured until now that there is a resolution coming up. What we should do to bring our issues, one of them is the Assyrian genocide issue, uh, more, bring that effort more effectively forward and to make sure that resolution passes. And the second, there, there was a $400 million bill, for instance, this year that was uh, coming on for to help the Assyrians in, in Iraq. Mm -hmm. 
but we have done no efforts whatsoever as a Syrian community, to my knowledge, to allocate these funds within our own community and our, our, our own organizations. What should the Assyrian people in America do? How they, how they can organize their efforts to make sure if future opportunities like that come along, the money goes, the funding goes to the right hands, so it's distributed to the right community versus going through other communities that mm -hmm. claiming they are defending our yeah, I, I, I know that you're going to be surprised by what I say. They have to be unified. If there are uh, uh, the Assyri American, uh, Assyrian American community here decides this is a top issue, this is what we want to see, what we want to move, and then you talk to uh, our brothers and sisters in Chicago and they disagree, they go to their member of Congress and say, no, that's not what I want, I want something else. So um, there is, on, on the major issues, well, uh, let me just use the uh, Armenian community as an example. It's the, it's they the, do have uh, two parties, though. What? They do have two parties, they still, of They're course they do. I'm not the talking line. about yeah. parties. I'm talking about issues. Mm -hmm. I don't think our issues are Republican or Very Democrat. Yes. I think they're nonpartisan. Yes. Let's just start with that. But the Assyrian American community in the country has to show that there's unanimity there. And it is the, the advocates are the ones that go to members of Congress. They're senators. They're a member of Congress and say, I'm part of the Assyrian American community or club members will go representing the officers maybe, you know, they go to the office, talk to the member or their staff. You need to, they need to be unified. And uh, I, I think that that's difficult for our people. I think that's difficult. I mean, I, you know, I mean, I, I remember starting one thing based on what uh, our community said here and then I got such a backlash from people in Turlock. Oh my God. <laughs> no, I, no, and I love them all. They're all my people. But I, the, the thing is, is that um, uh, it, it, it doesn't work that way in our system. It's not, this is not my prescription. I'm telling you, this is the way the system works. There are, in, in um, uh, people that have uh, uh, a family member that has Alzheimer's. These families have come together all over the country. And they have decided what they think is the most important thing for the Congress to do, the research dollars for a cure, because they see what's going on in their own homes, their own families. It's a form of torture. It's the, such a sad thing. And, uh, and then they come to Congress and they say, this is what, this is what we uh, were asking for, this is what we demand uh, on the part of families across the country uh, that have uh, Alzheimer's in there. Uh, so uh, I, I think very often people think that we just have a magic wand and that we pull it out of our whatever and uh, wave it and then it's done. It doesn't work that way. I know enough where to speak out and what to do. So I'm not, I'm not a Girl Scout, I'm not a beginner. But if I don't have anybody behind me, no one's gonna pay attention to it. You and see? by behind these other Congress members? Other yes, members but they have to, there has to be unanimity on the part of the Assyrian American community in our country. You're dealing with a national legislature. You're not dealing with a board of supervisors where there are five people and you need three votes. No, yeah, all. yeah. So you have to figure out what's your top priority, and then, and then people work on that. You see? Do you know how long it took for the Armenian genocide to be taken up and passed? Years. It was first presented That's right. In it was uh, no, no. Okay. It was introduced. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, but uh, uh, it ended. It ended over one hundred years of official U.S. silence on the issue. How do you like that? American, USA, silence. And we ended that. None of it is easy. But is it doable? Of course it is. You know, I always think that whatever, when someone says it's a challenge, I always say it's an opportunity. 
you know, it's how you think of it. But don't discount how really critically important um, the, the voice of the community and the advocates are, because they're the ones that really have to do the work. It doesn't go the other way. I can go to other members and say, I, uh, I need you to uh, join me on the Assyrian genocide. They don't even know who the hell we are. They don't even know where we come from. You know, they, they, I, I'm sorry to tell you that, but they're, they don't. Land at Barmoy, you know? Land at Barmoy, you know? So, it, so you have to educate them. But we have very large communities all over the country, in the Chicago area, New York, Florida, Michigan, Indiana, Southern California, the Central Valley of California, the Bay Area. That's a lot of, <laughs> that's a lot. You know, so that, that's my advice. Thank that's you. my advice, yes, Doreen, yes. So another a shout, up, a shout out from all of us. A lot of people think that only the authors of legislation are the people that have created the legislation. You have been behind so many supportive efforts and working for you have to work them. and working them, you have to work them and Congress. and you have worked on so many types of legislation, not only in the Congress but working with your assembly friends against hate, against what the Jewish caucus. You've worked with the Jewish caucus. You have been collaboratively <laughs> creating building, so much. Building, building. It, it is huge. Make, uh, it make uh, uh, someone's cause everyone's cause. Yes. You know, and then you, you bring other people with you. We just wanted to let you know, yeah. we know you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for okay. your voice. So how about some chai? Yeah. yeah.